And we are back with part two of Rosh Kadesh Kasvan 2021 and 5782. This segment is the altar call. Very, very important. Um, it is so important. It is so important to understand that not everyone is a child of God. Not everyone is going to heaven. Yeshua himself said there will be those that say to me, Lord, Lord, did I not prophesy in your name? Did I, did I not do this in your name? Did I not cast out demons in your name? And he will say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I don't know you. And they're not entering heaven. Not everyone is a child of God. You are a creation of God. You become a child of God when you were born again in the spirit. And yes, you must be born again. And Yeshua himself explained this in John chapter 3 to one of the Pharisees, Nicodemus. So come with me now to chapter 3. We're going to talk about the concept of being born again. The Pharisees come seeking truth. Now there was a man, a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jewish people. He came to Yeshua at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher have come from God, for no one can perform these signs which you do unless God is with him. Yeshua answered, Amen. Amen, I tell you, unless one is born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God born from above, born of the Spirit. And Nicodemus says, how can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus said to him, he cannot enter his mother's womb a second time and be born, can he? Yeshua answered, amen, 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 I tell you, unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be surprised that I said to you, you all must be born from above. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. Who it is with everyone born of the Spirit. The Father's love revealed. How can these things happen? Nicodemus said, Yeshua answered, You are a teacher of Israel, and you do not understand these things? Amen, amen. I tell you, we speak about what we know and testify about what we have seen. Yet you all do not receive our testimony. If you do not believe the earthly things I tell you, how will you believe when I tell you about heavenly things? No one has gone up into heaven except the one who has come down from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up so that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. So he was foretelling of his death on the cross. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The one who believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe has been condemned already because he has not put his trust in the name of the one and only one and ever peace. Now this is the judgment that the light has come into the world, and men love the darkness instead of light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come to the light, so that their deeds will not be exposed. But whoever practices the truth comes to the light, so that it may be known that his deeds have been accomplished by God. So you must be born again. And Yeshua, Jesus, is the way, the truth, and the life. He said it, and he said, no one will come to the Father except through him. There is no other way. There are not many paths like the world will tell you. There's many paths to get to heaven. There's this way. There's that way. No, no. there's one. His name is Yeshua, period. That's it. All others are on what Yeshua himself described as the broad path that leads to death and destruction. There's a narrow path. And many people are on the broad path. They're not on the narrow path because they believe as the world believes and they've been deceived to believe as the world believes. Step off of the world. Um, we are, if you are truly born again, you are in this world but not of it. 
we need to be thinking about kingdom things. Our, our heavenly home is our eternal home. So that's really important to know. So again, Yeshua is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus. Yeshua is Jesus' Hebrew name. Yeshua means salvation. And he is the one and only Savior, the Messiah. He will be coming a second time, not as a babe, not as the suffering Messiah that died on a cross. He, that, that's once and done. Um, he will be coming as the Lion of the tribe of Judah to rule and reign, to conquer. He's already conquered the evil one, but he will be putting the final kabash to the evil one. And he will be ruling and reigning forever as our king. Salvation can only be achieved through the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. Salvation is deliverance from sin and their consequences. Our Lord took all of the sins of the world with him when he laid down his life on the cross so that the world could be redeemed of sin forever. Prior to also going to the cross, he was beat beyond recognition as well. Um, and by his stripes, we are healed. Our, our health conditions and our afflictions. Um, were taken by him as well. The devil is alive, as usual. Prior to Yeshua coming, there was a sacrificial system that was put in place to cover sin, um, but the animals that were sacrificed had to be, and most of them were little lambs, had to be spotless, blemish-free, perfect, in order to, to cover sin. Now, when Yeshua came, he was the Lamb of the world, the, the, the Lamb of God that took away the sin of the world, and he had no sin. He was without spot, without blemish. He was perfect. So he is the only one that could do it. See, when the sin, the original sin took place with the first Adam in the garden, um, we lost our glorified body, and we were given a, really uh, this body that would perish returned to dust, and there was no hope for eternal life. Because we couldn't save ourselves. We couldn't clean ourselves from sin. So we needed a Savior. And that plan had already been put in place by Father God, um, by Abba, for Yeshua to come. It was put in place in the book of Genesis when he addressed the serpent that caused the sin to take place. He said, I will put enmity between you and the woman's seed, and he will crush your head. And that took place on the cross at Golgotha, the place of the skull. So um, the devil was defeated right then and there. Problem is, is the church doesn't take their authority back because Yeshua, Jesus, reversed the curse that occurred in the Garden of Eden. We've been absolved. We also have dominion over the earth again. So we need to rise up and take that authority in the name of Jesus, in the name of Yeshua, who gave that back to us. Understand where we stand if you're born again and saved. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And Romans 5, verse 8 says, But God commanded his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Yeshua died for us. The world tells you there's many paths to heaven. The world tells you you can work your way to heaven. The world tells you, some of the churches tell you, if you tithe enough or 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 even synagogues will tell you if you tithe enough money, you can you can you can buy your way out of hell. That's not true. And there are some churches that speak and preach on purgatory. There is no such place as purgatory. Let's be clear about that. You don't go somewhere to decide where you're going. When you your life ends, your fate is sealed already. But God has given us free will to make that choice. So choose this day whom you will serve. You, while you have breath in your lungs, make that choice. And I really, truly don't understand 
why someone would be sitting on the fence. If you look around us at the world that we live in today, it is just utter, utterly chaotic, confusing, and we need, the world needs Yeshua. Absolutely. Um, and being in Yeshua, he gives us the peace that passes all understanding. Our shalom, our peace is found in him. No one else, because you're not going to find peace right now in this crazy world. It's just topsy-turvy. It's upside down. So uh, again, I don't know if you're, if you're walking in this world without Yeshua, without Jesus, you're already lost. There's good news. You can be found because Yeshua died for everyone. So you too can be born again. You too can be saved if you're not. So um, this is one of the things that the Lord put on my heart uh, right at the beginning when I started doing uh, services, uh, when we started doing our ministry, um, is to do an altar call with everything that, every teaching, everything that I do, whether it's a Bible study, whether it's a Rosh Kadesh, uh, full, you know, new month service, whether it's a Shabbat service, whether it's a special Modim, one of the commanded feasts of God, at the end of everything that is done, um, an altar call is in place. So this is why we do it. I never know who stumbles across these um, because I do post to four social media platforms and it's also archived on YouTube. And I never know who may benefit, um, but God knows, you know. So, and one day I never know who may meet me in heaven and say, I came across your video and I said the prayer with you. Well, praise God. That's what it's there for. So I may never know, and that is that is that is wonder that, that is fine, that is fine with me. I don't take credit for it anyway. Um, I'm I'm just being obedient to Abba Father, who who put it in my spirit to do, um, because again, I never know who may stumble over this, and and actually it might be the very thing they need to hear to give their life to Jesus to Yeshua. To finally make that decision. And we all make that decision ourselves. No one can make it for you. We make that individual choice. It's between you and God. So choose this day whom you will serve. God gives you free will. He's not going to force himself on you. But understand there's consequences. And if you leave this world without Yeshua, you're not going to be in heaven. That is very clear. First John chapter one, verse nine says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He is the only one that is worthy to do that because he died for us. He died for everyone. He is the only one who can absolve you from anything as he is the one that paid the price for us. And that price was his life. I'm going to just say something about confessing sins. That is not to say that you come and you get forgiven. You confess your sins to the Lord and he forgives you, which he will. But. You need to be sincere about it. You need to have a contrite heart. And we're going to talk about that when we get into um, coming to the table of the Lord. Repenting, turning teshuva, turning back to God means you are giving up that sin that you're committing. Not to turn around, be forgiven, and turn around and go right back into the world and do it over and over and over again. And there are many people that, that treat forgiveness and, and the cleansing and the confessing of sins that way. And that is not, that is not what you're to do. So you don't wipe your slate clean in order for you to go right back out and start all over again. No, 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 no. The idea is you confess your sin. Yeshua forgives you and 
cleanse you of all unrighteousness for you to walk on a better path to allow the Holy Spirit to guide you. Now, if you've never accepted Yeshua as your Lord and Savior, I'm going to say this little prayer. You can say this with me. And this is the time that is open for you to do this. Dear God, I come to you today to confess that I acknowledge that I am a sinner. And I pray for forgiveness. I know I can't do this on my own. So I come to you today that to say that I'm truly sorry and I want to turn away from sin. And I want your help in keeping me from sinning against you. I believe Jesus is the Messiah. Yeshua is the Messiah. He's the Savior. I believe he died on the cross. He was buried. He rose again and is sitting at your right hand. I believe he's coming again. I want to be part of the family of God. I accept Yeshua, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior, now and forever. I declare Yeshua is my Lord and Savior. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords now and forever. Thank you for forgiving me, Yeshua. I accept the gift of salvation and the gift of eternal life. And I also believe by your stripes I am healed of illnesses and afflictions. Please send your Holy Spirit to live inside me to guide me in all your ways for the rest of my life. I believe through you and you alone that I am saved. I am healed. I am delivered. I am born again and set free from sin and the consequences of sin. I believe through you and you alone I am healed and now healthy of mind, body, and soul. In Yeshua, Jesus' precious, mighty, and awesome name, amen and amen. And if you said that prayer with me, welcome to the family of God. I'm going to encourage you to get into a Bible-based church or Messianic congregation, one that opens the Bible. And teaches doctrinally sound, <laughs> sound um, doctrine, um, not something from the world and not some mixed in pagan new age concept. We don't mix. We're not supposed to do that. We don't serve other gods. We serve the one true God and that's it. We need to stick to that. We cannot bend. We do not bow to any other God but our Father in Heaven. And that's very important. And it's very important to be very discerning. And how, are, how can you be discerning? First of all, to get a copy of the Bible and start reading it. You can't know what's being preached to you if you're not involved yourself. And there's a lot of people that come to church, and go to synagogue, and they sit there and they're preached to and they just listen and they may participate in the service of the day for the week and then they're off into the world and behaving like the rest of the world. Well, that's that's not how we should be doing things. We need to have a relationship with our Father in Heaven. Once you are born again, you're, you're a child of His. You need to get to know the heart of, of your Father. He loves you. He loves you so much that he gave his one and only son to die for you. That speaks volumes. He created us in his image. That speaks volumes. We're the only cre part of creation that is created in his image. That's why the devil works so hard to try to take as many down with him as he can. He hates humanity. But God loves humanity. The exact opposite. That's what the devil is. God is love. The devil is hate. Yeshua was the light of the world, is the light of the world, is always the light of the world. The devil is darkness. 
Fear is of the devil, not of God. We are to fear God, meaning revere God, respect God. He is our creator. But many people, they don't. They fear the world. They don't have fear in God. I'd be more fearful of God. God can, God can cast you into the lake of fire for eternity. That's more of a fearful thing than anything that's going on in this world. This world is messed up. But this world is temporary. Our vessels are very temporary. This is not our permanent structure. This is not our permanent home. This is very temporary. Eternity, when you look at what eternity is, it goes on forever and ever and ever. Our life, we have a limit. Our days are numbered from the time we're born to the time we take our last breath. But when we take our last breath, we walk into eternity. Now, are you going to heaven? Or are you going to hell? I mean, that's, 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 that's where it is. And that's where you'll spend the rest of infinity. <laughs> so people put a lot of stock in, you know, in this world but you know once you're born again it takes the sting out of death that's not to say that we don't mourn those that we lose that's i you know i can speak from experience yes we do mourn those that we lose but we also have that hope when we know that our loved ones are born again and saved we have that hope that we'll be reunited with them forever never to be separated and in the presence of her king forever. That is a hope this world can't even give or even come close to. So it is so very important that you get into a Bible-based church messianic congregation, one that actually honors the word of God. There are many that do not honor the word of God. They have allowed false doctrine to come in. They've allowed the world to creep in. You will know them by their fruits. If they're doing things that are contrary to God, then they're not. They're not doing what God wants. Get a copy of the Bible. Go to Bible Hub, Bible Gateway. You can you can check out all the different versions. I will caution you to stay away from 21st century Bibles. Unfortunately, many have tampered with the Word of God. They have added to, subtracted from, um, cherry-picked, created their own version of the Bible. Uh, it's not anointed, and it's not divinely ins it's not divinely inspired of God if you're messing with the Word of God, first of all. And God does not bless those things. It's just a book. However, the Bible, the Bible, the untampered Bible, is the true Word of God. There's no error in the Word of God. God divinely inspired 40 plus authors. So yes, it is blessed. It is a living Word. And every time you read the Bible, you're going to get something um, new, actually new revelation, especially if you pray and ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. Because there's always new revelation because it is a living word from a living God. So understand that. So be real careful who you listen to as well. And we've got good versions of the Bible. Yes, the King James Version, the New King James Version, NASB, the English Standard Version, Messianic Jewish Bible, uh, Family Bible, Tree of Life Version is a good version of the Bible. Um, all of those are good. Um, I'd stick to the ones before the 21st century for sure. And that's really all I'm going to say on Bibles. Um, God wants a relationship with you. Now that you are a child of God, seek his face. Don't just, don't just seek his hand. Seek his face. Seek to be in his presence. But be sure that you make sure because our God is a holy God. Sin cannot stand before a holy God. 
So make sure that any sin or uh, sin or unknown sin is cleared of you as you proceed into the presence of a holy God. I can tell you it's a beautiful, beautiful experience to to be enveloped in 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 the presence of of God. The Holy Spirit is the Comforter, is the third of the Godhead, and and He was sent to us. And as part of the family of God, we are the reason uh, why evil is actually held back as, as, you know, as much as it is because we have this, the restrainer living inside of us, the Holy Spirit. If we are, we're raptured, as, as you say, harpatsa, uh, once that happens, the Holy Spirit is gone. And all bets are off because this is not going to be, you think it's bad now. This is nothing compared to what it's going to be like. So praise God that you are a member of the family of God. And you can be spared of all of that um, because it's going to get downright really nasty when the restrainer is removed. And that's the Holy Spirit. When you join a Messianic congregation or a Bible-based congregation, check out what they have to offer as far as Bible study, as far as small groups. As a body of Messiah, we are to edify one another, we're to support one another, we're to, you know, help each other to grow. And many believers are at different levels, so there are Definitely um, long-standing believers that have a lot of years of experience that can help you. And that is a good thing. So they can disciple you and empower you. We are all called to the great commission of sharing the gospel of Yeshua, the gospel of Jesus. And leading people to Jesus. So they may be saved. Everyone. That is everyone's responsibility as a believer. So don't be afraid to share the Messiah with the world. That is what we're called to do. With that being said, I am going to close part two, and then we're going to come back with Holy Communion. And we will, there's, before we actually take Holy Communion, I go through, I always go through the steps to prepare your heart for communion. You just cannot come in and take the elements without, without examining your heart, without, without looking at is there sin in your life that needs to be repented for ask for forgiveness and there is probably a known sin in all of our lives because even a thought may come to your mind that you don't think is a bad thought but to a holy god we have no idea and it could be something very simple so we want to be sure that we do not come to the table of the Lord riddled with any kind of sin. It is a very serious, serious thing that we're doing, remembering Yeshua. And he asked us to do this in remembrance. He actually instituted the Lord's Supper in the upper room with his disciples. And this is something that he asked us to do in remembrance of him. So I'm going to pause it here and then we're going to come, come back and do Holy Communion.